thank you for joining my uh, session. So today I'd like to talk about the importance of InnoSource in the AI era. So I'm Yuki Hattori, uh, the Vice President of the InnoSource Commons Foundation and the uh, uh, Senior Architect at GitHub. And then before joining GitHub, actually I uh, experienced um, a, a various roles at Microsoft. And I'm the author of the book DevOps Unleashed from Pact Publishing. And also the uh, in Japanese, actually, I wrote the book about AI powered coding. Yep. Here's today's agenda. So uh, I'd like to first explain about uh, exploring about AI and inner source integration and addressing challenges in making code AI ready. And why inner source is key for AI adoption. First, well, as GitHub employee, I get these questions all the time because we have the product GitHub Copilot, and then they are fascinating questions, really. Companies and developers constantly approach me saying things like, oh, we want to feed our code to AI, and we want AI to understand our code base, and we want AI to comprehend our uh, documentation or maybe coding guidelines. Yeah. And you know what? These are absolutely valid aspiration in the in today's AI landscape. But let's talk about AI's current limitation. And I think this is really important to understand. One of the, one of the most significant challenges we are dealing with is token limitation. You know, it's likely trying to have a conversation through a tiny window. There's only so much context you can push through at once. Now, I know what you're thinking, but wait, token windows are getting bigger, right? So in the future, probably we can put so many contexts uh, in the uh, to AI. And yes, you are absolutely correct. We are seeing improvement in this area. However, even with larger token window, we are still facing some fundamental challenges. Let me break this down for you. First, ensuring that the AI understand the correct context is incredibly complex. So this is why prompt engineering is so important. And it's not just about feeding more data, it's about feeding the right data. And here's something crucial. Just because you can input more tokens doesn't mean we should fill them with noise. So we actually need to simplify our tasks for AI, not complicate them. So when you are writing a code, yeah, probably you want to feed uh, every source code or maybe every project code to AI, but it's very hard So for current AI situation. And now let's talk about some technical approaches people are considering. First, RAG. RAG is Retrieval Argumented Generation. Yeah, sounds promising, right? So it's a combination of search and content generation. So recently, it's been getting a lot of attention, actually. So, But here's a thing. Search accuracy remains a significant challenge. And when we look at fine tuning, yes, it's expensive. Yes, for example, uh, GitHub recently released custom model feature. Um, it's a preview, and that's exciting. And I think it's a great uh, step forward for the industry. But let me break down the cost factor because it's kind of crucial to understand. We are not just talking about training costs even though those are substantial, but we are also looking at inference cost. Yeah, think about it. You need to continuously host these kind of large models on high-end NVIDIA chips. That's not a one-time expense, it's an ongoing one. So you should choose your approach wisely. And now let me share something positive about, about the future. There are three things we can be absolutely certain about. So first, infrastructure cost will continue to decrease. So we are already seeing this trend. And the second, models will evolve to be 
both smarter and more efficient. So imagine getting better results with uh, smaller models. And third, we will develop better best practices for technologies such as RAG or maybe React. However, let's be kind of practical for a moment. So when you really think about it, can you justify fine tuning models for a five person uh, project and hosting it uh, indefinitely? So from an ROI perspective, it simply doesn't make sense, right? The, the improvements in accuracy just don't justify the cost for such a small scale. But here's where the story takes a turn. What if, think bigger, right? So what if we consider training models that can be used organization-wide by hundreds of people, right? Now that's where the ROI starts to make sense. That's where AI become truly viable for, yeah, when it comes to the customization or personalization. And yes, while local model, custom model hosting might be possible, but yes, um, we see not only large language model and also a small language model as well, and an even tiny language model. So it, it sounds kind of feasible, but let's be realistic. Not every employee has an M4 Mac laptop or maybe high-end uh, hardware. In fact, to be honest, many of your developers might be working on relatively modest machines, right? Or maybe a very small thin client. So, okay, next, let's talk about organizational readiness. Now here's where things get a really interesting, to be honest. And Inasource comes into the picture. You say you want AI to read your source code, right? But let me ask you this. How accessible are your resources really? And how ready is your organization for this? And this is exactly where Inasource enters the picture. This isn't just a coincidence. It's a crucial connection that many organizations are missing. And yes, GitHub is the open source platform and we are developing GitHub Copilot. Again, it's not a coincidence. And let me make a kind of bold statement here. For the next few years, the code that you will want AI to learn from or maybe consume from will by necessity need to be in a source code, or at least it will need to follow the same principle as open source code. Like AI learned to code from open source code. This is just, this isn't just my opinion, it's a kind of practical reality. Think about the characteristic of code that ideal for AI consumption or maybe learning. It needs to be actively maintained not just sitting in some repository gathering digital dust. It must be up to date because outdated code is worth than no code at all, right? And it should be cross-organizationally shared or at least shareable. Yeah, something that everyone either uses or could use. And the quality needs to be exceptional as well. So we can't feed AI poor examples, right? And perhaps most importantly, it needs solid documentation. Now, let's talk about some non-negotiable conditions that many people overlook. First and foremost, you need to own the code. Customer project code is off limit. So if you work for uh, kind of system integrator and then you're uh, having some client project and I'm working with client and then you can't feed that code because of the maybe security boundary and then also the contract. And then you need crystal clear boundaries about code usage, right? We can't have AI crossing security boundary like you can't cross the boundary as well. And you need licensing uh, clarity on your code. You don't want to feed code that license of which is not clear in your organization or maybe in your repository, right? 
and perhaps most basically, but often overlooked, the code needs to be in a state where it can actually be accessed and read, right? The companies that understand this connection between inner source and AI readiness, they are the ones who will be leading in the way in the next phase of kind of software development, uh, especially in the AI powered coding. So here's um, a very great resource, which is inner source patterns. So if you uh, want to adopt inner source in your organization, it's the this is the guideline for you. And in this uh, patterns, actually there are so many uh, great uh, pattern practices about uh, you can start today. I I will introduce some of them. So inner source license. So if you put a license in, in your repository, it's great. So if you wanna someday uh, want AI to learn a code from your organization, it's, it will give you uh, some clear view about uh, what should be consumed and what should not be consumed. And trusted committer. So yeah, everything should be up to date. Uh, if you wanna work with AI, even you are trying to um, provide the code with the uh, for instance, GitHub Copilot old completion, or maybe you can um, create a prompt to provide the um, feed AI. And also when it comes to fine tuning, your code should be up to date. So actually in usual cases, uh, especially for the big enterprise, so mentality of uh, maintenance is kind of um, lacking, right? So trust, trusted committer will give you some clarity about how to share the code and how to maintain the code in your organization. And yeah, let me share something that I think is absolutely crucial for understanding where we are headed. So you see, when we talk about making our code AI ready, we are not just talking about a technical challenge. We are talking about fundamental shift in how we think about code ownership and sharing. We are talking about a fundamental shift in how we think about code ownership and sharing within our organization. Yeah, please think about it. When was the last time for you to try to understand someone else code from a different organization or maybe different department? How accessible was it and how well documented? These questions become even more critical when we are thinking about AI consumption. Now, this is where InnoSource really shines. InnoSource isn't just about sharing code, it's about creating a sub uh, sustainable ecosystem for code sharing and collaboration. When you implement InnoSource practices properly, something magic magical happens. Your code naturally become more readable and better documented, more maintainable, and more reusable. And guess what? These are exactly the quality that make code ideal for AI consumption. But here's something that often gets overlooked again in these discussions. Making your code AI ready through inner source practices isn't just a technical transformation again, it's a cultural one. You are not just changing how you write code. You are changing how your entire organization thinks about code ownership. And then you are moving from my code to our code, from my documentation or maybe teams only documentation to organizational documentation or maybe companies corporate documentation. And this shift is absolutely uh, critical for success in the AI era. And final note, so as we wrap up today, inner source is, uh, is not just a nice to have anymore in the AI era, it's becoming must have. It's the foundation upon which successful AI adoption will be built. Yeah, and that's it. With that, uh, I will finish my presentation and I'm, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much.